Welcome to God's Playbook with your host, Father Rico Passero. Clock is a 20, 10, 5, touchdown! Touchdown! Let's play ball. Hi friends, welcome back to God's Playbook here on Friday. Yesterday we took a passage from St. John Bosco. Today I want to look at St. Ignatius Loyola and a beautiful phrase that he gives us, a point to ponder on. He says, we should not want to see or do anything that cannot be done in the presence of God and of God's creatures. And so we will always keep aware and imagination of being present before God. Again, St. Ignatius says, we should not want to see or do anything that could not be done in the presence of God and of God's creatures. And so we will always keep aware and imagination of being present before God. God is forever present. Not in a creepy way or a scary way, but in a beautiful way. God knows our minds, our hearts, what's on our lips, our behaviors, what we fail to do. God sees everything. God hears everything. God sees everything. So when we think of ourselves in the presence of God, we should always want to do what is appropriate because he's always around. Growing up, my grandmother was our moral compass. I have two younger brothers, and I would never say something bad in front of Nona to my brothers for fear of recourse, to be respectful to her. Her presence in the room suggested that we are to behave at all costs as my parents ingrained that in us as my last surviving grandparent. Even when I would speak to my parents, when Nona was in the room, I was always much more respectful as if she wasn't. Now, my parents always deserved my respect, and yet there were times in which I was very disrespectful. But when Nona's around, my mother would say, you guys always behave a little bit better. Well, that's because my parents ingrained in the three of us that when Nona's around, we are to always behave. Now, they also taught us where to behave at all times, and yet the moral compass is just not as strong as when Nona's around. Same thing, I would never swear in front of Nona. What would she say? What would she think of me? I'd be horrified if she loved me any less. Now, this doesn't mean I wasn't authentic in front of Nona. What it means is I was very reflective of what I was saying and doing in her presence. I was keenly aware that I didn't want to let her down, that her love for me as her grandson was something that helped to shape what I would say and do. Well, friends, how much more exponentially important is it that we are aware of God's presence? While I love my grandmother very much and pray that she now rests in the Lord's hands in heaven, and she is my best friend. The reality is, she's certainly not God. She didn't die on the cross for me, create me, give me life, sustain me. Though she loved me in her own ways, her love pales in comparison to that of God. And when I love my grandmother, I want to respect her. I want to show my love for her. I want to acknowledge her presence and always try to be respectful. And so St. Ignatius is inviting us, friends, whoever that known character is for you in your life, should we not be aware that Jesus is always there? When I'm on the phone with the cable company, Jesus is listening to the conversation. This call may be recorded for training or security purposes. We hear those messages I think sometimes that also helps to remind us that we shouldn't be shouting at the person on the other end if we don't get what we want. There's no problem in escalating the matter if the problem doesn't get resolved. But to speak in condescending tones, would Jesus be proud of the way I'm speaking on the phone? 
when in arguments with people we love or people we don't love? Again, does our language reflect a child of God? Jesus is also listening to that conversation. Would I speak that way in front of my boss, my spouse, my children or grandchildren, my parents, my grandmother? The answer is no, then I certainly shouldn't be doing that, period, because Jesus is there, whether those people I love are present or not. Even for our own character, why should I ever want to say or do anything to lessen holiness? If Jesus is always present, then I always want to make him proud. The way we build our spiritual and moral character is the way we conduct ourselves when no one is looking. Because in fact, God's always looking. So there's never a point in time where I'm alone. Again, this isn't meant to be creepy or scary in any way, but rather a gentle reminder that I need to live an authentic Christian witness every moment of every day in my life. And yes, when I fail, I can turn to God's mercy and thank God for that. But perhaps I need to expand my moral compass to not just include my now deceased grandmother, but when she was alive, how that really helped me. Perhaps this phrase from St. Ignatius can really help us, friends, to realize I need to be very cognizant of what I say and do. I don't want to let God down. In fact, when I bite my tongue, turn the other cheek, respond to hate with love, it not only makes God proud, but puts a smile on his face, an act of kindness, a willingness to be virtuous. These are choices I want to make each day. So, friends, as St. Ignatius tells us again, we should not want to see or do anything that cannot be done in the presence of God and of God's creatures. And so we will always keep aware and imagination of being present before God. May we always recognize our presence before God and live accordingly. For God's Playbook, friends, I'm Father Rico. God loves you, and so do I. If you like what you hear, please consider supporting us using any of our affiliate links in the description below via Buzzsprout, Ko-Fi, or GoFundMe. Thanks, and God bless.